Some of the biggest bands in the world have residencies here all year round. And guess what? We're going to visit one of them right now. And this band is the one and only old good buddies of mine, Def Leppard, baby. And I'm sitting here backstage uh, at this wonderful theater at Planet Hollywood, and I'm talking with Joe Elliott of Def Leppard, a person I've known for 40 years. But 40 years many... this month. Exactly. Mm. We're having an anniversary conversation. Yeah, yeah. My first time in, in England, I did a, mm -hmm. a British tour of Sammy Hagar, Street Machine record, which I, I know this because it, it just turned 40 years old on right, Sunday. There you go. So long story short, uh, my manager's going, these guys are really great, man. You got to stay and you know, come early. You got to see them, you know. And I'm going, ah, they're kids, man. You know, <laughs> I got he's, kids. He was not wrong. I almost have kids. Their yeah, age, yeah. So I might have. And uh, it's like seeing you guys then and, and sitting here with you now and seeing which all that you've been through and, and went through everything. The fact that you guys stuck together and did all that and you're still here today and doing better than ever or as good as ever. Yeah, easily. I mean, how did that happen for you? I mean, well, the, the sticking together part was kind of simple, really. We came from a real northern English working class background where you just know that you're either going to become a soccer player, a musician or a bank robber. <laughs> You know, that's it. Or it's factory life. And if you want something outside of a factory, there were your three options. Did you try your hand at the other two? Yeah, I, I, or did I, you just I, go in and sing? Actually, know? Rick Savage was on, on an apprentice soccer player for Sheffield United. What but, about um, the bank robber? Though? The bank robbery thing, no. I think <laughs> the closest I came to being like a felon was breaking into a few gigs up drain pipes and through <laughs> toilet windows. And wow. stuff like that, T-Rex or Bowie or whatever. But um, the sticking together part just comes from that working class background of like, you've got this possibly only one chance to do something with your life that's so extraordinary compared to what everybody else in your kind of locale is doing that we were scared to do anything but you know and when Rick lost his arm the way that we'd become even then only five years as a band we were so tight that we were like well it's like you don't kick your brother out your family if he yeah. has an accident so if he if he can't do this it's up to him to tell us and that gave him the confidence to, to give it a go. It's so cool. I mean, so unheard of in rock. I mean, I've been thrown out of so many bands. You know? I mean, it's like you, you, get, you, just, you go all the way with these people to the top, sell a gazillion records and do all this stuff. And then all of a sudden they throw you out because for some ego trip or something. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like, I never got so that, much, especially those, uh, those two bands, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, two of my favorites. Out, I've been yeah. thrown, out of, thrown out of two, but it's, it's okay, I'm, I'm happy. But it's just so funny how, some people just have different attitudes. Yeah, it's, it's a it, wonderful thing. It seems guys. to be kind of like a very British thing. You know, like the Rolling Stones are kind of the core of that band is yeah. tight. The Beatles were tight until they split up. They never had a lineup change. A couple of times they had a stunt drum out, I think, when Ringo had tonsillitis. The, the longer we go on doing this, the more cool it feels to be the same people. So oh, when bet. little kind of personal issues come up, we all have this internal kind of memo that's like don't even worry about it because in three weeks time this will have all gone away and look what we would have thrown away if, if we yeah. let that take over and it never has how yeah. do you guys write songs in the band what's the, um, what's the system or it's changed it over the years mm -hmm. in the in in the original days with Morty, he said don't come in with songs because i'm just going to tear them apart <laughs> okay so we would come in with riffs and we and he would groove on a riff and Mutt would go, that's that's great. What have we got to glue on to that? And then somebody else would come out with so a great example is the song Hysteria, the title mm -hmm. track of the album. The jangle bit was Sav, the bridge bit was uh, Phil, I think, and the chorus was Steve. And then me and Mutt came up with the melodies and the lyrics. So you guys Total were all team. right as, as a band. But we did, but then come eight, 93, 96 onwards, we would start coming in with songs because everybody had home studios and we would just Pro tools, Program the yeah, drums, yeah. play the bass, play rough guitar, do a vocal and go, got this song and go, okay, well, just change, just replace the guitars, keep the vocal. The demo became the song on a lot of yeah, our stuff. You but know. you still all write together. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We write together, we write apart. We just do whatever works. It's always the song wins. The song is the boss. Not any one of the five of us. The song's the boss. If it's a great song, we do it. Why do you think that uh, the I, longevity? I, okay, where, where is the longevity? Here's my, my, my kind of analogy of it. It's, it's, we're just a big jet, or a jet, and we were going through a ton of turbulence in the 90s, but sooner or later, turbulence goes away, and then blue sky. Blue flying again, wow. You know, and here's the thing, 
What we had, which we just had to wait for the people that were 16-year-old fans, they're now married with a mortgage and a kid, to come back round to be able to afford to come back out and join the club. Because we're still here. You know, we just the, the audience went away, but they've all come uh, back. But you... they've come back bigger. Last year was our most successful tour uh, or year in our entire That's so awesome. career. That's bigger than 88. Congratulations. Bigger That's than 88. So Freaking you know. awesome. Well, you guys made great music. I tell you, that's the other thing. Bands that didn't have a great catalog, yeah, they're not quite doing what you and Sharon did. Well, you, you you've guys got, got the Eagles and you've got Fleetwood Mac, and then you've got yeah. the other 900,000 bands from that yeah, time yeah. period. You know what I mean? <clears throat> no, you, you, you guys put... I mean, and there's also a last man standing aspect to it as well. The longer we stay around, all the other bands split up and leave. You know, and somebody will pick up the, you know, their, their iPad and go, oh, such and such have split up, and we'll go, one more notch up the ladder. I have this silly little thing called this and that. Let me okay. just wrap this thing right up. Sure, man. Now, this year you're not allowed to go Pisces on me. You're not a Pisces on No, you? I'm not. I'm a Leo. Oh, well, the Leos will have no trouble with this or that. Chest beating front man and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, Robert yeah. Robert. yeah. 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 and I got a double Leo in me, by the way. I'm a Libra with a double Leo. Okay. okay. The singer or the song? The song. Boom. Residency or straight up tour? <sighs> Tough one. I love the same bed for a month. <laughs> uh, tour. Fame or fortune? Fame. Montrose or Van Halen? Oh, Montrose. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> You can't take the 13-year-old kid out of me. I'm sorry. Never going to Oh, who's more important, the front man or the lead guitarist? The front man. Yes, absolutely. And what's more in song, most important for a song, melody, groove, or lyric? Uh, melody. I'll tell you why. Because Japanese kids can whistle the melody, but they can't sing the words. Yeah, it's xenoglossic. It has no, you don't, yeah. If the, exactly. It doesn't matter, you know, yeah. you can have instrumental versions of a great song. Um, the melody is always going to be the killer. I, le I learned that accidentally off Lennon and McCartney. It's all about the melody. Those guys could sing, but they weren't, you know, the melodies were better than their singing. Sammy Hagar, David Lee Roth. No, no, fuck all that. Another rock roll road trip in the can. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> I saved him. I saved him. And the answer is. <laughs> Now that I've got the key to this city, I'm heading out to meet with a guy who was given the key to the city of Miami back in 2004. Here in 2020, he's the name behind the big chicken restaurant here in Las Vegas, Mr. Shaquille O'Neal. Jack, Sammy Hagar, first of all. I know Thank you, you are, for doing this. Mr. Van Helen, Mr. Well, Cabo Well, it's funny Wabo. you say that because the first time I had anything, when we played the forum years ago probably, and you left a tennis shoe in our dressing room. And you stole it? Well, it disappeared. I think Eddie's got the damn thing. But it was so big, it was. I thought it was a joke. I'm saying, oh, yeah, this is really funny, man. This is all cool. And the guy said, no, that's really his shit. And I went, damn. But anyway, something happened to that shoe. I might need another one. What size shoe you. is that? 22. 42? No, 22. Oh, shit. Oh, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 22. <laughs> We're eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I never met you before, but when I was asking around my friends, hey, anybody meet you? Everybody said, oh, the greatest guy in the world. Oh, the nice guy in the world, just like you, man. He's a lot like you. I'm going, he's a lot like me. What have we got in common? So, but they said that, you know, you're like, you like dabbling in business, and obviously, here you go. Yes. So, what else besides Chicken Check? What do you, what other? Well, I own uh, four other entities in Vegas uh, at the Paris Hotel Hex, That's Alexa. That's next door to the Common Wild. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> Hex and Alexa. And I own Beer Park upstairs, and I own Chateau. And I own this right here, which is called Big Chicken. And I have my hands in a lot of things. When I was coming up, there was always a, a, a tale that all athletes went broke. Not all, but most athletes went broke after they, after they uh, stopped performing. I didn't want to be one of those guys, so I really started studying business at an early age, uh, obtained my master's degree, uh, went and got my doctorate, and just, you know, learned about business. And, what I take from my, my, my world into business is it's all about teamwork. Like this big chicken, of course I don't run it, but I do have a point guard, I have a power for it. I have guys that run it, and it's my job to manage them and lead them in a positive direction. And if I, I take what I learned from basketball and move it over into the sports world, I thought it would be very successful. Well, when did you start playing basketball? I started playing at nine. 
Yeah. Were you really already? Yeah, I was already bigger than everybody. I always tell the story. I remember one time when I was nine, playing in the championship game, had 50 points. We were blowing this team out, 60 to two. So a parent from the opposition came and grabbed this kid, and he looked at the referee and officials. He said, no way this kid is nine years old. This kid is nine <laughs> years old. He's going to be the best NBA player ever. To this kid and walked off. And my father's like, see, you're going to be the best. You're going to be better. And I remember that story vividly. So it was always bigger. But once I started getting older, I realized that I wasn't that good yet. And the fortunate thing for me is my life has always been peaks and valleys. As a youngster, started off terrible. Best fifth grader. Not the best sixth grader, seventh grader, eighth grader. Best ninth grader. Not the best sophomore, not the best junior. Best senior. Not the best college freshman, not the best sophomore. Best junior. Go to the NBA. Oh, you're not the best NBA player. Magic is still here. Jordan is still here. Barker is still here. So being that I knew how to uh, fall down and pick myself back up, it was a good thing. So business, what's driving you today? Still the same I old set, thing, or do you think it's, you know, I, in the past? Or? I set goals for myself. So now that I'm done playing, I just want to remain successful. The, the best thing I did after I made a, a, a lot of money, is to stop thinking about money. So when you don't have anything, you're like, I gotta get 10 million, I gotta get 50 million. So now that I got that, I don't even think about it. And I just, I'm very, very strategic at what I do. And if it's good, if it's coming from the right place, eight out of 10 times it will be successful. Uh, obviously you do a lot of philanthropy, take uh, charity work, what's your favorite cause? I mean, what, do, well, do you I have, have a pet, I mean, you can't give to everything and everybody. Yeah, I, like, uh, I'm really big with Make-A-Wish. You ever heard of Make-A-Wish? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do Make-A-Wish, absolutely. Uh, a lot of children before they pass, they want to they wanna talk to me. And uh, I actually had to uh, talk to one today. And that yeah, breaks my heart when yeah, I do it. It's the hardest too. job for me, is. sitting there. Oh, man, I, I, can't, actually, I can't even hardly so, talk. Go, go. I have, I was hurt so bad one time with yeah. a Make-A-Wish situation that it yep. changed my life. Yeah. So, so that's when I started helping people, for yeah. real. So, like, so I don't like passing out checks all the time. No, no, no. Especially, well, especially, well, with, these, like especially with these GoFundMe scams going on. I don't, I like to be able to say, okay, this kid needs this. I'll take care of it. I'll write the check for my organization and I'll make sure it's done and I'll take care of it. You obviously feel good about yourself and you should. And I'm so happy to hear that this Thank kind you. of man you are. And I'm, Appreciate it. I can look you right in the eye and tell you from the bottom of my heart. You don't know how close we are to that stuff. Forget all the business shit. See this shit right here? Yep. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Thank this you. is what I'm talking about. This is why people think we're like, okay, but I have a silly thing. Yep. Let's call this or that. Got you it. and the Pisces, this is really fucked up for Pisces. Let's and do I can it. say that. Well, because you guys can't make up your mind about you. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> You just dangle the bait and yeah, all, all, yeah. all the time. But, okay, just one or the other. If you want to say, yeah. yeah, you can do it because you're Shaq, and I, I wouldn't fucking argue with the guy your size, even if I, if I was tough, which I am. Music or movies? Music. Miami or L.A. Miami. Mm. Kenny Smith or Charles Barkley? Kenny Smith. I hate Charles Barkley. <laughs> I did a TV show with him when he was so rude to me. I have he never been rude? treated. Oh, he was rude to Charles, me. He was knock dogging you out when me, I see man. And, oh, for no reason, too. I mean, you I treat was, my guy like that. I'm gonna yeah. get you. Basketball or Cha Ching? Whoever wrote that one down. Basketball or Cha Ching? Yeah. Cha Ching, all day. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Damn. Jack, I'm taking that to the bank. You hear that, you fuckers? <laughs> <laughs> that should be the name of your show. You hear that, you fuckers? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.